Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our North America industry update number seven. Um, we're happy to uh, have you all join us today, and thank you for those who joined us last week as well. We had a great webinar last week where we heard updates from Visa Victoria and uh, South Australia, um, and we're pleased to continue uh, the series of updates from our state and territory partners today uh, with Western Australia and uh, Tourism Tasmania. My name is Chris Allison. I'm Head of Commercial Partnerships for Tourism Australia based in Los Angeles. I'll be hosting the webinar today. Um, if you guys do have any questions uh, for our speakers today, um, we please ask that you uh, pop those in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen um, and we'll, uh, we'll host a Q&A section at the end of the webinar uh, later this afternoon. So I'm just going to quickly uh, refresh the agenda for today. Um, so I've got a couple of uh, updates from uh, Tourism Australia, which I'll share with you second, uh, first off. Um, then afterwards, I'll be handing over to um, our colleague Kylie Smith. She's Regional Ma Manager for Americas for Tourism Western Australia. Um, I'm sure she needs no introduction to many of you. Um, and after Kylie, we'll be hearing an update from uh, our colleagues at Tourism Tasmania. And we're joined with a very early start this morning by Catherine Carey, who's the Head of Conversion and Global Op Operations uh, for Tourism Tasmania, uh, based down in Hobart. So uh, we welcome uh, Kat today. Um, and also in the background uh, from Tourism Tasmania, is Karen Stoltz and she may jump in depending on uh, how, uh, how curly some of your questions are so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll maybe see Karen at the end of the webinar today. Um, so before we kick into the uh, state and territory updates just a, a couple of quick uh, updates from Tourism Australia. Just wanted to highlight a couple of things that have been launched from us over the past couple of weeks. Uh, the first one is our new COVID safe travel portal that's now available on australia.com uh, many of you will be familiar with our uh, travel map that we launched a number of months ago, uh, which was designed to help customers navigate uh, and uh, link into the various information about uh, the state and territory restrictions that are in place and that were unrelated to travel. Um, we've built out the travel portal to be more um, broader and robust now. Um, so it still includes that wonderful map that we built out, but also includes more specific information um, in regards to some of the specific aspects of a tourism experience. So we have information on there about uh, information before you travel, um, broader information about who, how hotels and accommodation um, are implementing COVID safe practices, um, as well as uh, tourism experiences, activities and gatherings. So there's a really fantastic wealth of information here. Um, obviously, at the moment, this is very much designed to help our, um, uh, our uh, tourists and travellers based in Australia um, as they travel around Australia. But this will be a fantastic resource that we'll continue to build out um, as and when our international uh, borders open um, to help uh, customers who will be able to travel down there again and um, just uh, keep up to date and navigate all the, the various uh, latest information on, on how to travel safe um, around Australia. So that, that's a great resource there. Um, and then the second piece is uh, we also just launched at the weekend uh, some, some fantastic new content. So we launched um, some new 8D video series. Um, this is also now available uh, directly on australia.com on our homepage. Um, and we'll be starting to promote this uh, through our social channels, um, both in the US and Canada, um, over the next two to three weeks to make sure we get this in front of our uh, target consumers. Um, 8D videos, for those of you that are not familiar, um, is a really immersive um, sound experience. Uh, they're designed, um, as you can see here, to um, be experienced with um, uh, noise cancelling headphones. Um, and we designed this content to uh, basically marry together um, uh, light and sound in a really immersive experience way. And they're designed to take uh, folks on a, a really immersive uh, journey around Australia, across our different states, in a very unique and different way. Um, so I really encourage you guys to um, have a look at these. Um, really immersive experiences are a really great way to escape from uh, what's going on around us and and really, uh, really truly kind of experience uh, the signs uh, and sights of Australia in a very different way. So um, you will find uh, the AD video series um, today uh, directly linked from the homepage of australia.com. So uh, please uh, go and check that out. Um, and for those of you that are promoting uh, uh, content out to your customers, uh, we also have um, this available through our trade resources portal as well to help you guys uh, share this through your own channels and get this into front of uh, your own customers too. 
Um, so that's all from Tourism Australia uh, today. Um, so I'm now pleased to introduce our first speaker for today. Uh, this is uh, Kylie Smith. Uh, Kylie's Regional Man Manager for the Americas with Tourism Western Australia. And she's going to share uh, an update in terms of uh, what's going on in uh, Western Australia. So welcome, Kylie. Thanks so much, Chris. And hello, everybody. Uh, just trying to get here. Um, so Western Australia, I'll just jump right in here and just do a quick update on, for anybody who doesn't know Western Australia and what there is to, to see and do within the state, very briefly, it's um, ancient and beautiful landscape, home to pristine beaches, rugged gorges, unique rock formations such as the pinnacles in the image here, powering forests, um, secluded waterfalls and one of the world's uh, largest wildflower collections. And you'll also be able to find unforgettable cultural and wildlife encounters, exquisite food and drink. Uh, it's the farm to table throughout Australia, really. Farm to table is just the norm. So it's not just something that you'll go and find um, for that. You'll find it anywhere that you go. Um, we also have vibrant events throughout the state and also in cosmopolitan Perth. It's a flourishing city life combined with really easy to access nature experiences, all within around 30 minutes of the city centre. Just a few interesting facts. Um, WA is home to um, Australia's only horizontal falls up in the Kimberley region at Talbot Bay. Um, one of the greatest long distance walks that goes, spans over about 600 miles from Kalamunda in the Perth Hills to Albany in the south, on the south coast. And uh, the town of Manjama in the southwest is the largest producer of black truffles in the southern hemisphere. So for any of you foodies out there, um, and WA has one of the longest whale watching seasons in the world. So the Humpback Highway, they call it, sees more than 30,000 gentle giants that move up and down the West Coast. And there's tours that operate from anywhere between May through December, right along the coastline of Western Australia. And of course, we are home to the world's happiest animal, the quokka. So jumping into what's happening right now, um, we are currently in phase four of the Western Australia roadmap for COVID-19, which basically means that um, our major sport and entertainment venues can operate at 50% capacity. And so recently we've been hosting AFL games at Optus Stadium with around 25,000 patrons. Uh, all events are permitted except for those really large scale multi-stage music festivals. Um, and most restaurants, bars, cafes, hotels, and tour operators, which is super important, are operating. Uh, many tourism operators adapted to the changing circumstances and took the opportunity, whether when they were closed or just during quieter periods, uh, to develop new products or fine tune what they already have. Uh, so we have a, um, a, lot, a lot of great opportunities when coming back and when international travel returns. The current list of closed operators that I received last week are substantially made up of seasonal operators based out in regions. And um, in June, Tourism Western Australia launched the Wander Out Yonder campaign, which was really aimed at West Australians and encouraging them to holiday at home and see the state like they haven't ever seen it before. Uh, so really, Wander Out Yonder was introduced once regional restrictions were eased which was a thing um, with such a large state, they, there were restrictions between traveling into different regions as well. Um, so once they eased up, we really needed a way to be able to encourage West Australians out into those regions, in particular regions such as Exmouth and Ningaloo Reef, and up in the Northwest, the Kimberley and the Pilbara regions, who hadn't opened yet or had only just opened for the 2020 season. Uh, a lot of them finish up around November, December, each year and then open up again around March, April. Uh, so they'd already been closed for a period of a few months and were just opening up when COVID restrictions hit. Uh, so it was really important that we, um, as the tourism organization, encourage West Australians to get out there and experience our own state. The original program has now been followed up with a million reasons to wander out yonder which was launched just last week, uh, the voucher program saw more than 400 tour and experience operators sign up to be part of the initiative. Um, and incredible demand saw that saw 10,000 available Wanda vouchers uh, valued at $100 each snapped up in just four minutes. Uh, so this was a really great way to ensure that these uh, 
suppliers, these tourism suppliers stay open and they're there ready for when international travel does return. So it's just important that we wanted to point out that this is what's happening in the state at the moment, but that's all to make sure that the, the operators, as many operators as possible, stay relevant and are there when we, when we can all return. But what's new? What's coming up over the next year or two? Um, and what's just opened? Because it's, just, it's still been going on during this period. Um, a lot of you may know we've had we've seen a hotel boom in Perth in recent years with 42 new or redeveloped hotels that have opened in and around Perth, um, including global brands such as Western, Intercontinental, Como, and the Ritz Carlton that just returned to Australia last year um, with opening up um, at Elizabeth Key there in uh, November 2019. And then we also have a new hotel opening up out on Rottnest Island, Rottnest Sandfire set to open in October, so just next month. I believe it's around October 20, um, 2020. So uh, we're looking forward to a new, a new property out on Rottnest Island as well. But locals are definitely taking advantage of the fact that they have their island paradise back to themselves again at the moment. Uh, the new WA Museum Boulevard uh, has seen a $428 million um, investment and it will open in no on November 21 and it will act as a gateway to explore all of Western Australia with a really strong focus on Aboriginal stories. This is a great new option for when we can go back to be able to include when you have clients within Perth just to be able to explore more of the state if they're not able to get out into regions. Uh, the Madagara Bridge um, are introducing a zip line and a climb. So this is in the image here that you can see on the right, Madagarp is um, like a pedestrian bridge that can, um, goes over the Swan River and connects up from Optus Stadium there and where Crown Towers and the Crown Precinct is, is over on that island there where Optus Stadium is with the Perth city centre. So um, for anyone who really wants to get out there with the thrill seekers, they'll be able to travel 1300 feet across the Swan River at up to 60 miles per hour and this will launch in early 2021. So still plenty going on within Perth. And this is just a few of the things that I've pulled out for each of the regions. In the Southwest, down in the Margaret River region, you may have heard that Western are planning on opening up a resort or building a resort down near Narrabut Beach with a view over the Indian Ocean. Um, so that is due to open around mid 2023. Um, and Hilton Garden Inn, uh, really great to acknowledge that this, this um, brand is going out into the region. So whether it's in Bustleton in the southwest or even Albany down on the, um, on the waterfront. So some beautiful properties that will open up um, to be able to open up these regions to travellers. Throughout the west of the rest of the state, the Coral Coast region, Calberry Skywalk up on Calberry National Park, have opened up just in uh, July, August, two viewing platforms that extend, um, well, they're th 330 feet above the ground and they extend 80 and 55 feet beyond the rim of the Murchison River Gorge. So uh, beautiful views out in the, in the National Park there. Um, and then the Coral Coast Highway, it's a 770 mile journey stretching from Perth up to Exmouth. And whilst the, the road or the highway might not be new, the fact that between the RTO in the region and the STO, we have, we've worked with the rental car places um, such as Avis and Hertz Australia, which is not affected by the bankruptcy of Hertz in the US. Um, Hertz Australia is still operating just fine. So um, the RTO and the STO have worked with the rental car agencies to be able to put in the one-way car rental deals, which used to be over $1,000 to drop off a car one way, um, plus, the, the cost of the rental car. Um, so this is a way that's brought the cost right down to be able to drop it off so you can drive one way and fly the other to be able to really see more of the coastline along there. And they won't be, anybody who does that won't be disappointed. In the out, Golden Outback, road trips still are very popular. The Southwest Edge, which extends from Perth, starts off in Perth, um, uh, travels down along the Southwest uh, through Margaret River and through to Albany and then on to Esperance. Uh, so this is a road trip that was um, in partnership with the three RTOs there, Destination Perth, um, Australia's Golden Outback and Australia's Southwest, to really showcase these three regions. 
And once your clients are in Esperance and they see what they can see in Esperance, obviously going to Lucky Bay, uh, they can either fly back to Perth or wherever they'd like to go, or they can continue on driving if that's something that they would like to do. So some really great options there. Um, Dirt Music, some of you may have received an email a couple of months back from me um, talking about Dirt Music being released on a digital format here in the US. Uh, Esperance was one of the locations used in the film and the movie is based on a novel by Tim Winton, the beloved West Australian. Um, and in the Northwest, new walking tours. Um, so they've been introduced, they take visitors through the, through the streets of Broome to learn about Broome's culture, history and its small bar and restaurant scene. And then also the uh, revitalization of Broome's Chinatown. So this includes public art celebrating the town's um, Aboriginal, Asian and Perling history, um, sorry, history, and, and at Town Beach, they've been um, in, put in some new terraces so you can easily see um, staircase to the moon when that's happening. So that's just a few of the things happening around the region. There was a whole lot more, but I just tried to drill it right down in, in the essence of keeping time. Um, and I get asked this all the time. What is the wildflower season? When are the whale sharks or the humpback whales out? When is staircase to the moon? So, and it seems like all of my colleagues in Western Australia are as well. So we've put together this nature's calendar, um, so color coded obviously by region, and then you can see there by month. So obviously right now in September, the humpback whales can be seen throughout the Southwest, the Coral Coast and uh, the Northwest. Um, and even in Perth, so you can see them along the coastline there. Uh, the southern right whales can be seen on the golden outback, so down along the southern part of the state um, and the southwest. And you can see here like manta rays throughout the year, dolphins, dugongs or manatees. Uh, quokkas obviously um, in the Perth region can be seen year round as well. And they also have a special section for wildflowers for anybody who likes to travel um, around the state for the different wildflowers with over 12,000 species on offer throughout the year. But what I really wanted to go through was, we were due, as was, I believe there was a few states in a similar position, we were due to come out with a new brand campaign this year. Um, and obviously everything, 2020 had other ideas. So what we came up with was more of a placeholder um, to really tap into audiences COVID related anxieties, but we don't want to, you know, talk about that as much, but, you know, we'll dial up Western Australia's proof points that have, have not really been allowed to speak to much previously. Um, the remoteness, the isolation, the spaciousness, the uncrowded uh, areas right throughout the state. And so this is where adventure awaits come in. Uh, comes in. Uh, so really we're looking to develop a campaign platform to deliver on the communication strategy um, and really persuade audiences to turn a time of waiting into a time of planning and to um, take the time to learn more about the amazing destination. So um, we do have some assets available for partners uh, that, you know, obviously I can work with you on that, whether it's Adventure Awaits Lockups, a suite of uh, digital and social videos in different time edits to make life easier. These can focus on Perth and those immediate surrounding areas or all of state. And then also we've gone out to operators, uh, travel operators within the region to get their, um, their stories as well. So we can develop, uh, deliver on deep, rich human stories uh, there. So um, that's something that we can offer out. But you know, Western Australia is home to the most isolated capital city in the world with large expanses of untouched land, wide open spaces, picturesque landscapes, and a unique adventure at every turn. And it's the perfect place to get away from the crowds and um, go beyond the unexpected or the expected. Um, our wide open spaces and picturesque landscapes make it the perfect location for an adventure after being stuck inside our homes during the COVID-19 lockdowns. So it's really a place for you where adventure awaits. So um, we will have different adventures that like no other that um, we really wanted to push out. So otherworldly adventures, places like the Pinnacles, it's like a lunar landscape, um, ancient adventures, obviously our cultural Aboriginal history, um, adventures full of characters, adventures across majestic landscapes with endless blue skies. 
So it's something that we're really pushing out there and I'm happy to work with any of you to be able to um, de um, deliver on this as well. Uh, I just have a quick video as well um, that I'd like to share with you. So let me just get this going for you. Have you been dreaming of getting away? Far away? Well, we know a place that will recharge your spirit. WA, Western Australia, a land where adventure awaits. Otherworldly adventures, ancient adventures, majestic, unfiltered adventures. Here in Western Australia, you can get away from the crowds, go beyond the expected and take the road less traveled. <laughs> There's plenty to choose from. Watch the sun melt into the water while strolling along a picture-perfect beach on the back of a camel. Get a fresh perspective on life, 40 metres up in the canopy of an ancient forest. Give your taste buds a holiday, sampling the best local produce in the Margaret River wine region. Or maybe it's time you just got outside and went for a swim with these gentle giants. Go on, turn waiting into planning. Western Australia, adventure awaits. So that is um, really my update there. I just wanted to go through a few of the things that we've been doing um, in Western Australia and how we'd like to be able to push this out um, and working with you all. And um, I look forward now to handing over to learn more about Tasmania. Awesome. Kari, thank you so much. That was a, that was a great update. It's always, uh, I, whenever we see content like you've just showed, it's always like a real kind of reminder of how much we all miss traveling and so it really makes me want to just jump on a plane but obviously we can't we can't do that in a moment so thanks for the update that, that was fantastic um so as Kelly said we're now going to um move to the other side of the country and a, a little bit further south and uh hear an update from our colleagues at tourism tasmania and um, so happy to be joined today by Catherine carey um uh, from tourism tasmania she is based down in hobart and she's going to take us through the uh, update from Tasmania today. So welcome, welcome Kat. Good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris, and uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks very much, Chris, uh, for, having, for having me here and uh, very happy to be coming to you all live from Hobart and to talk to you a little bit today about Tasmania. First up, uh, we'd like to show you, uh, oops, sorry, I'm just trying to move. Through this screen, apologies. There we go.
So that's just a, a beautiful way to show you um, that video actually, I might add, was made pre-COVID or at the, at the beginning, um, but just goes to continue to show that the things that are still important for us here in Tasmania, even after uh, everything that we're currently going through, uh, it still remains really important. So we see Tasmania as a place for where you can come to connect uh, and whether that's connecting with the people you're traveling with or having that opportunity to connect with our nature, our animals, um, exceptional food and wine experiences, or just to come and connect with, with us Tasmanians. Um, we're an interesting bunch and a very friendly folk and uh, we really can't wait to welcome, welcome you all back to our island again. But just to give you a brief update as to where things are at, um, our borders here in Tasmania are still closed. We were the first state um, to close, being an island state, probably one of the more easier ones to do that. And they have been closed since the 21st of March. We're currently working towards an open date of 1 December, where hopefully uh, we can welcome back visitors from around all states of Australia. Um, but that is still not 100% sure. Um, we're expecting an announcement in the next few weeks. There may even be, um, given the success that is happening across the country at the moment, that this date may come forward to some states by the end of October. Lots of work um, similar to other, places, other states around the country and around the world obviously have, has gone into place around making sure that all our businesses are COVID safe, not only is that incredibly important for all of our employees and, and, and our Tasmanians, but also for our visitors here to have peace of mind that wherever they're traveling to and whatever they're experiencing, that a COVID safety plan has been enacted and put into place. So, oh, I've just jumped at, oh, sorry. This uh, is not very responsive. I'm trying to move too fast. Um, what I will talk to you about is our road to recovery and what we're planning to do here in Tasmania and what we have been doing. Um, we have, our first priority was to how we can best support our industry and that is through an intrastate campaign. Now Tasmania only has 500,000 uh, 500,000 residents. So when we normally welcome 1.3 million visitors to the state, um, we can't sustain our own tourism industry, but we are absolutely doing our best to support the industry to keep them um, afloat uh, until, until our borders open again. There have been many initiatives, both at state and federal level to support industry and to support employees. And one, the role that Tourism Tasmania has played is to ensure that we invest heavily in doing an intrastate campaign, which we have called Make Yourself at Home. This has been active now for a few months and has gone out um, across all channels. And I'll share a little bit of the creative with you. Uh, in addition to that, similar to like, as, uh, as Kylie also mentioned, a voucher system, which has been very popular around Australia. The Tasmanians, we've also had our own voucher system um, to encourage people to get out around the state. Um, these, that was a $7.5 million initiative that was, uh, Fully, uh, fully redeemed, shall I say, uh, Tasmanians had to go on and register for their voucher. That 7.5 million was fully redeemed in 38 minutes. And tonight, local time at 7 p.m., another $5 million worth of vouchers will be uh, made available. This allows for um, $100 uh, per person or per couple um, to $150 per family for accommodation and $50 per person to use on experiences. Here's some examples of the creative that we've been using. Again, to just ensure that we're showing uh, Tasmanians to go to places that they may not normally have considered and pushing a little bit further away and enjoying our, our food and drink experiences, getting up to King Island to play some golf moving across to uh there's another image there of king island um, and also pushing people out uh, into our northwestern regions uh the image there which is, is actually called the edge of the world <laughs> and we do feel at the moment with covid that we really are at the edge of the world 
um, and encouraging our, our, our Tasmanian friends to get out and, and experience some of these places. It is currently school holidays here in Tasmania and many, many Tasmanians are out and about um, exploring their backyard. And here's just, again, just some more information about, about our voucher, which will no, like, no doubt uh, run out like hotcakes this evening at 7 p.m. So we are really looking forward to welcoming our North American market back. Um, you may or may not know, uh, but North America is our number one inbound, so international visitor market into Tasmania. Um, Tasmania has approximately, and these figures are, that I'm referring to are pre-COVID, so about the mixture is 80% domestic visitation, 20% international, North America being the number one. The North Americans we find absolutely are drawn to our pristine nature, our wildlife, our food and beverage offerings, um, and, and all the nature-based experiences that Tasmania has. That can be anything as very soft adventure from gentle walks right through to canyoning, uh, abseiling, uh, river rafting, you know, you name it, we've, we've got it here. And Tasmania being a small island, all of this is incredibly accessible. Uh, you can travel one to two hours in Tasmania by car and experience a very, very different landscape. Um, uh, even a very, very different climate. So we, uh, you know, the amount of, of experiences that you can see in a relatively short time in Tasmania um, is, is very special and something that makes it an, an easy destination for North Americans to visit. How have we stayed engaged over the last, uh, the last six to eight months within within this, within COVID, particularly within the North American market, but also with our own industry here. So we've taken part in uh, virtual product showcases. In August, we created um, what was called Taz Talk the Movie, and I hope some of you may have seen it. If, if not, we can absolutely make sure that you get a link to see it. Uh, a little background, Taz Talk is an event that we hold here in, in Hobart every two years where we invite inbound tour operators and our retail Australian Tassie specialists to come to Tasmania to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with our, uh, with our industry and then take part in a FAMIL program. So the event goes for approximately about one week and is really often oversubscribed and one of the favourite events in Australia for people to come to. Now, unfortunately, in July this year, it was not possible to hold the event. So instead, we thought, how can we bring the event to, to, our, uh, to, to all of our wholesale and, and retail travel friends? And also, how can we do something really positive for our tourism industry here? So in a very, very quick time, we, we hustled and got out and about. Fortunately, we were allowed um, at that stage in May, we were allowed to very limited get out and, uh, and, and travel around the state to make a movie with, with exemptions approved and made a movie uh, to, to then share uh, about Tasmania and give the opportunity for all of our operators to speak directly about their product. So I really do welcome you to watch this movie um, and more than happy to share if you haven't seen it. Uh, we've also been involved in the September uh, program recently of Elevate with ATTA and had some fantastic appointments at the virtual trade booth. And there's 20 Tasmanian sellers who are really excited about Marketplace coming up in October, um, five of whom are brand new to promoting their product to the North American market. So watch out for that. We've been it's been very important for us also to keep engaged with not only our trade partners, but also to consumers directly in, in, in the United States. And we've had some fantastic wins um, over, you know, over the last few years in, in how we've been featured in some of these wonderful publications. Um, just to keep, keep the flame alive, keep people thinking about Tasmania, keep getting excited about it, stay in that dreaming phase, hopefully start to move to consideration and in the not too distant future in, in planning as well. But it's been wonderful to, to be involved in some of these publications. Um, and this is something that we've 
tend to set the bar pretty high and continue to focus on doing that throughout the rest of 20 and into 2021. Similarly, we've also been working very hard within the social media space. And I'm not sure if many of you have seen some of our posts that um, have done really well in the US, particularly this one here of Bruni Island with, uh, with some pretty cute little wallabies. But we've used this as an opportunity when we can't be in active conversion campaign mode to reinvest some money into a strategic uh, social media program in some key markets around the world. And the United States was one of these. It's not normally something that we've had the, had the funds to invest in. Um, and this has been a great opportunity for us to be able to engage directly with consumers in the United States and to also test some creative uh, executions with them and really see what resonates and give us a good understanding as to what, what, uh, what the Americans are responding to well to help us form up what future content we should be pushing out in the United States and what future campaign programs could look like as well. We've had great success with this with excess of millions of reach every week. And here's some more examples of some of the creative that we've used. Our animals obviously resonate really well with those very cute little devils having a, having a cuddle, um, as well as some uh, beautiful imagery of, of our waterfalls and in nature. I'd just like to give you just a really quick snapshot um, of some of Tasmania's regions and, and maybe some of the more or maybe less known experiences that we have that we really believe uh, the American market will, um, will appreciate and, and some more drivers as to why they wish they may choose to come to, to Tasmania. So uh, we're currently working on a touring strategy. Tasmania is very much a self-drive destination. There is very limited public transport. So the best way to get around the state is by driving your own car or by having that as a guided experience, whether that's a private guide or being part of a small group tour. Um, there's currently a, a lot of investment going into signage around the state around mapping out some brand new named up journeys that will be launched uh, in later this year. Um, and with that will come a better digital experience on our website um, and also more resources, um, experiences, itineraries, programs, attractions that we'll be able to share with our trade partners to be able to build that into, into your programs as well for visiting Tasmania. Our wilderness is our unique selling point um, and one of the main reason, reasons people come to Tassie. About 40% of the island is protected by national parks and we do have UNESCO World Heritage status. So that very dark green part there of the state is, that's just the UNESCO World Heritage status, um, but there's obviously more of the state that is protected. We do have 19 national parks in total. In addition to our beautiful wilderness, um, we have a, a program of sorts that we've established over the last two, two years, which is called the Unordinary Adventures. And this is um, sort of highlighting unique outdoor experiences that are world class uh, in, in Tasmania and something a little bit different um, to maybe other uh, no, they're, they're just world-class experiences. A little bit modelled. We have uh, sneakily sort of modelled this a little bit on uh, Tourism Australia's fantastic signature experiences program, just to really push into people who like to travel because of their passions. Um, and, and some of these quite niche, but particularly these we find golf, fly fishing, walking and mountain biking really do resonate with our international guests um, and particularly from our friends from the United States. So if you don't mind, I'll just go very briefly over some of these, these pillars. Golf, uh, we have uh, some of the world's best golf courses are here in Tasmania. Um, I, re I mentioned before King Island, so we have some beautiful golf courses on King Island that is now accessible, not only through, uh, you can come to King Island from Melbourne, but you can also get to King Island now direct flights from Hobart, which have only just started, um, oh, have only just been announced in the last two weeks, whereby you can fly now directly from Hobart straight through to Flinders, to King Island and also to Flinders Island as well exciting new opportunities 
we're excited as Tasmanians because we haven't been able to fly there directly from Hobart. You normally have to travel up to the north of the state. Um, and also it will be fantastic new opportunities for international visitors when they come here. Um, so our golf is is a real bucket list item for Australians to come to Tasmania to play golf, and King Island in particular, and Barmboogle, um, but also internationally, these golf courses are incredibly high, highly ranked, and fortunately, are public access golf courses, so no membership at all required and open seven days a week. In addition to the golf, we also have fly fishing, we do have the purest strain of wild brown trout on the planet here in Tasmania. Uh, the World Fly Fishing Championships were held here in Tasmania recently and received fantastic coverage. I'm not sure if any of you were aware of it at the time. It was live, it was filmed and, and shown around the world. The conditions were pretty brutal. It was very cold. It was quite windy. It was quite rugged, but it was exactly what these world-class fly fishers were looking at. It was the ultimate challenge. So for those who are looking for something that is very, um, is, is remote, is quite wild, you're out in this beautiful um, nature, you'll often see many, many animals. We found that a lot of the international fly fishers were so amazed at just the engagement they were having with wombats and wallabies whilst they're fishing for trout at the same time. Um, and we have there some really interesting also and very unpretentious and genuine characters of, of our fly fishing guides who are not only wonderful ambassadors and uh, of Tasmania, but exceptionally well knowledge and can get you into these amazing parts around Tasmania to do some of the world's best fly fishing. We also are very well known for our walks, obviously being a nature, a state that's protected by for almost 50%. We have thousands and thousands of kilometers of trails all around the state. And some of these are, can be anything from a, a 30 minute walk. Um, this image here is shown just at the top of uh, Kunanyi, Mount Wellington here in Hobart. So beautiful views out over our, over our city and, and very accessible to also multi-day walks uh, that are on boards and uh, with, with uh, guided, uh, guided experiences and luxury lodge accommodation on the way to also very rugged and remote walks that might be five to 10 days where you do have to carry in everything yourself. So literally a walk that would suit anyone, um, even walks that are accessible for children in prams um, and elderly as well. Um, and on these walks, you will also more often than not have very close and regular encounters with our, with our gorgeous wildlife, in particular wombats, wallabies, echidnas. Mountain biking, there are more and more trails popping up all around the state. Um, there's ones that have been in development now throughout the COVID period. So there'll be more to add to this list um, even in the next few months, which is really exciting. Um, we have them literally covered around all of those four regions that I mentioned to you before. Um, and some of these again are where you can just take your own bike or um, there are operators in all of these regions whereby you can hire all of the equipment from them and or also do a guided experience as well. So for whatever level you're at, also these trails uh, have been made to suit some for at a very entry level of mountain biking where there's no mountain biking experience required, bike riding of course, but no formal mountain biking experience to those who are absolute adventure seekers to, to do some of the toughest trails in the country. We've also been fortunate enough to have world, um, uh, world class uh, competitions here held in Tasmania. We have plenty of resources that are also available to you. So please do reach out. Um, Karen Stotts is, is on, online today as well. And I, I'm sure she needs absolutely no introduction to you whatsoever. Um, our website's Tassie Trade, um, for the obvious, for our, for our trade partners and also our consumer facing website, Discover Tasmania, have, have a lot of great resources for you to share. Um, and if there's any particular information that you may need from us, including our travel professionals guide, which is this image here, it is downloadable from our Tassie Trade website. Um, but please just reach out to us and, and we're more than happy to share uh, and pass that on to you, including the video that I showed at the beginning 
um, as well as any parts of Taz Talk, the movie, um, that will give you some really, hopefully some great inspirational ideas about Tasmania. We can't wait to open our borders, um, firstly to our mainland friends, hopefully on the 1st of December, maybe a little bit sooner. And then, you know, to welcome you all back um, as soon as possible. We're doing a heap of work at the moment with our network partners and airlines. Um, please rest assured that Tasmania is going to be very well connected again. Um, Tasmania, obviously being an island, you can't drive here. You can only get here by plane or by Spirit of Tasmania, a boat. And um, uh, so the airlines uh, know that Tasmania is a great place for them to start making money pretty quickly. Um, and we've been in very, very heavy discussions with all of our network partners um, to make sure that that capacity gets back as soon as possible. Um, another interesting tip, which I forgot to mention earlier, um, is we are in quite deep discussions also with our friends across the Tasman in New Zealand. Um, so the Tasmanian government and the New Zealand government are in discussions about opening up the Hobart to Auckland uh, direct access. This was a discussion that was underway pre-COVID, had obviously been paused uh, for, the, for the last few months, but is a very active discussion at the moment. We're hopeful to be making an announcement about that uh, sooner rather than later. Um, and not only does this open up a great opportunity for Tasmanians, it will be our only international flight, but obviously to, to welcome in uh, our Kiwi friends. But as you can also imagine, would pose a very interesting uh, new opportunity for Americans to come to Tasmania via a direct link from Auckland. So with that, I would like to say thank you very much for, for having me here today and um, look forward to answering any questions. Um, and thanks again, Chris and the team at TA for having, having us on board. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much. Um, that was a, a great update. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to visit both WA and Tasmania for the first time last October and fantastic part of the country. So I definitely can't wait to get back and just seeing both of your updates and videos is is uh, really reminding me of how great your respective parts of the country are. So thanks for thanks for sharing today. Um, so for everyone uh, on the webinar, we will be on for a couple of more minutes. So if anyone does have any questions, uh, please pop them in the Q and A box, and uh, we'll ask Kylie and uh, Kat to answer those. Um, but just to maybe kick off the questions um, for both of you. So obviously, I think more than any other state, you guys have been pretty much closed off for the whole whole period of time, um, even despite that period of time when things were opening up. How, how are your um, operators um, handling the situation at the moment and what's the sentiment and kind of view from them as, as they look forward? Uh, maybe Kylie, do you want to take that first? Sure. Um, any of the operators that I've been speaking to are still positive in Western Australia. They've, um, as I mentioned through the presentation, it, it's been difficult for them, especially those out in regions that, you know, were, were closed already for four to six months um, prior to COVID. And then we're just starting to open up. I had just opened, say, in Exmouth for the whale shark season in March, only to shut down within um, four weeks. And then um, up in the Kimberley region, they hadn't really opened up at all before they were shut down. And then... It, within Western Australia, not only is the state border closed and will be for a little bit more time, I believe, um, but there were regional restrictions as well. And even now, not even um, very high fines if anybody is seen to be going into any of the remote Aboriginal communities, because uh, we really need to protect all of that culture and history and the people, um, you know, from, from anything that might, you know, tear through any disease or virus that might tear through those communities. So it's, it's, they've been the hardest hit, but there has been a focus really on, at one point, um, on really getting people, Western Australians back out into those regions. Um, I know earlier, like a month or so ago, Tourism Western Australia you know, went to the top business people, businessmen um, in Perth and chartered a flight out into the East Kimberley to get them up into the, um, you know, out into the bungle bungles for them to see it for themselves, to encourage them to get their companies traveling regionally as well. So um, th th there's a big focus on helping those regions that just have missed out on months and months and months of business. Thank you. Can what about in Tasmania, same, same question. Thanks, Chris. Um, yes, in, in Tassie, 
uh, we were fortunate that we weren't as impacted by the bushfires um, over the summer. So our operators here had a good summer right through until um, uh, until March. Obviously, there was already drop off that was starting to happen because of lack of international visitors coming to Australia anyway over the summer. Um, We've, uh, well, the operators, similar to Kylie, I think are still very positive. They're very much a glass half full bunch down here in Tassie. Being, a, being an island and being so remote, there is that concept of looking after each other. We, we stick together. We have to be a bit innovative. We've always been, you know, quite heavily removed from, it's only probably more in the last 10 to 15 years that Tasmania has been really so well connected to the mainland Australia with so many flights per day. So that level of um, thinking outside the box, being, uh, being positive and, and helping each other out has, has always been an, an underlying fundamental of Tasmania. The current voucher system has been really good to keep, uh, to keep operators afloat. They're absolutely um, just itching for those borders to open on the on the first of December to try to get a good summer back in, knowing that we won't have full capacity coming back to the state. We're expecting to have possibly about thirty percent of pre-COVID um, air, air access by Christmas, and maybe back to fifty percent by March. So they really will be looking to try to uh, make the most of that. Make the most of that. Um, uh, as we as we build up, but ultimately, um, you know, very positive and and looking after each other. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. You know, I think it's. Um, I don't think we talked about this last week, but I think many of the many of the, the state governments, um, state and territory governments, have been getting together um, and collectively trying to work towards that first of December opening um, across the country, um, which is which is really awesome. So it will be, will be great to see. Um, you know, kind of the domestic tourism kickstart again, uh, hopefully towards uh, Christmas for, for many of the states. So that's awesome. Um, we do have one specific question here, which is which is for Tasmania. And um, the question is, uh, where in Tasmania is the most popular for fly fishing? Ooh, <laughs> we have about 3,000 internal like riverways where, where you can go fly fishing. Um, I would say the... Uh, the Central Highlands, so literally right in the middle of Tasmania, is where uh, the, most of the fly fishing is undertaken. Um, that is probably, it's about an hour, literally a, an hour and a half drive um, from either Hobart or from Launceston, so right in the middle. There is, a, there is accommodation there at a place called Thousand Lakes Lodge. Um, which is perfectly suited for someone to go and stay. This is not a luxury lodge, but it is very well appointed um, and would be probably my best recommendation to stay there. You have literally just out the front of that lodge, all uh, there are a thousand lakes. This is all glacier cut. Uh, sorry, that's hard to, hard to say. Glacier, mm -hmm. Glacially cut lakes <laughs> um, from... Uh, on the plateau of Tasmania. It is very beautiful. Um, so you also have a huge amount of choice of what type of lake or river you want to fish in. Um, and they can also organize guides for you as well. Um, but in saying that, if you prefer river fishing as well versus in, in lakes, there's many rivers. One that I would recommend is the Meander River, which is more in the north of the state, just outside of Launceston. So also very easily accessible from either Launceston or a very cute little town called Deloraine. Um, but if anyone would like more information on that, um, we can absolutely send through a list of operators um, who, who assist um, North American visitors and can provide guides to any of these regions in Tassie. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, well, I think we don't have any more questions, so I'll just um, I'll start my wrap up by thanking uh, Kat and Kylie again for joining us today. That, that was really uh, comprehensive updates from both of your states. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, taking the time to provide uh, some updates uh, for everyone. So thank you so much. Um, so just to wrap up today's webinar, uh, just a quick reminder, we will have another webinar um, at this time next week. Uh, so that will be at one o'clock. Uh, sorry, not this time, next week, in two weeks, sorry, on October 13th at one o'clock Pacific. Um, and we'll be hearing from the remainder of our state partners. So we'll be joined by uh, our colleagues from Northern Territory, 
um, and tourism events Queensland, um, who will provide updates uh, on their specific areas as well. Um, also a reminder at this stage, I, I think we did pop it in the email um, last week, but just a, just a verbal reminder, uh, further details will come. Um, but Tourism Australia, as part of our um, Australian Marketplace programme, will be hosting a broader market update on October the 20th. Um, and that will be at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and there, uh, Tourism Australia will, will be providing a more comprehensive update um, on many areas, such as the latest consumer insights from this market, the latest program of work that we're undertaking, undertaking in the US and Canada uh, to make sure that we're keeping uh, both our distribution partners and our consumers engaged with Destination Australia at this time, um, and showing some of the amazing new content plans that we have uh, coming up uh, to keep our partners engaged. So uh, just a verbal reminder on that one, but we'll be sending out more details on that specific update in the next couple of weeks. Um, but the next update in this series, uh, as on the screen there, will be October 13th at 1 p.m. Pacific, and we'll be joined by Northern Territory and Tourism Events Queensland. Um, so with that, I wanted to thank you all for joining us today. Um, we want to thank you for your continued uh, support of Australia at this time. We know it's, it's very tough out there, and um, you know, we, we, we don't have much, much positive to tell you at the moment in terms of being able to send uh, folks down from North America, but uh, we hope that day will be coming uh, will be coming soon. But we appreciate your time uh, to stay engaged with us and and make sure that we're sharing uh, information between us. So thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we uh, continue to wish uh, you and your families uh, safe and well. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>